coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. God is so interested in positioning us for the manifested word by having our mind, our will, and emotions line up with him that God gave gifts to the body of Christ to help us in the process of discipleship. Proskunio, down on my knees, flat on my face. Proskunio, and I worship to you. From the depth of my soul, in spirit and in truth, total adoration. I'm in love with you, all of you, none of me. Proskunia, my worship to you. Like a dog licking its master's hands, this temple belongs to you. Down at your feet, prostrate at your throne, Proskunia is what I bring to you. Who am I without you? Where would I be if there was no you? What do I have that didn't come from you? Proscunio is what I bring to you. Here I break it, my alabaster before you. My precious, poured out for you. I withhold nothing from you. Money, lands, cars, dreams. My alabaster box, broken before you. Proscunio is all I bring to you. Fragrance fills the air. Joy fills my soul. Tears flowing down my face. With my weave, I wipe your feet. My glory surrendered to you. Proscunia, my worship is all I bring to you. Positioning for the manifested word. Part four, I took quite a bit of time doing a review in the first service and paid for it with my time. So I'm not doing any review now. Review by... But uh... well, remember that the core truth we have been looking at is that the manifested word is guaranteed fruit in the life of a... Life of a disciple. And we've been looking at differences between evangelism and discipleship. We've looked at six differences, and I hope you will go back and look at them again if you haven't been at those meetings and, or you've forgotten. So today we're going to start with part seven. Number seven, a convert is converted instantly. A convert is converted instantly. Remember, we're looking at evangelism versus discipleship. So if you've been writing your notes the way we said, you have evangelism on one side and you have discipleship on the other side. So on the side of evangelism, we say that a convert is converted instantly. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new crea creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Everybody say, he is have passed, have become. Does that scripture say, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he will be a new creature? Does it say all things will eventually pass away? Does it say, behold, all things will one day become new? No. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So many of us, you know, approach conversion when you get born again as a process. It's somehow deep inside, we think, well, you know, maybe you weren't really fully saved. 
And that's why sometimes you get somebody born again and you see them do something the next day and you doubt that they really got born again. Friends, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Glory be to God. How many of us here have seen somebody raised from the dead before? How many of us want to see somebody raised from the dead? Wouldn't it be nice if we went to the mortuary and got a body here? And then I did some word around the body and the body jumped up. Wouldn't this place just scatter? Eh? Wouldn't you say, eh, hey, now I know she's a man of God. She has raised the dead. Well, listen to me, church. Any time somebody comes out here to accept Jesus Christ, you've just witnessed a resurrection. That's what it is. Evangelism is the conversion of the spirit of a man. It's the instant conversion of the spirit of a man. That's what evangelism is. That's resurrection. That's death coming to life in a split second. There is no other force, no other force, no religion, no belief system that has the ability to take somebody from darkness to light in an instant. There is no force, no belief system, no prophet, no leader, nothing that you can ever follow or believe in that will make somebody get from darkness to light and get instant instantly changed for eternity. That's what evangelism does. When you get somebody born again, there's an instant conversion. Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So that's it for evangelism on that side. But on the side of discipleship, write this down. A disciple is raised over a process of time. A disciple is raised over a process of time. So we said that evangelism results in the instant conversion of the spirit of a man but discipleship results in the gradual conversion of the soul of a man. Discipleship results in the gradual conversion of the soul of a man. Notice the word gradual versus instant. So with discipleship, the mind, the will, the emotions of a man are changed in a process of time. Does anybody, can anybody say that from when they got born again to, to now, believing that you've been sitting under the word, that your mind has changed about some things? Has your way of thinking changed about some things? Have the things you desire changed? Certainly, that's what discipleship is. A gradual conversion of the soul of a man. Ephesians 5.8 says, For you were once darkness... But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You were once darkness. Now you are light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. There are two truths in that verse. And who can see them? Who wasn't here in the first service? Two truths in that verse. And who can see what those truths are? Ephesians 5, 8. You were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. What are the truths you see in that verse? Somebody? Who can tell me? What's it telling you? Do you see something that looks contradictory in that verse? You were once darkness, but now you are in the light. Walk as children of light. Should I pick on someone? Huh? Akit, what does it tell you? Ah, she opened her mouth. What does it I saw you staring at me. That means you know now. You wouldn't have been staring at me like if you didn't know. You were once darkness, now you are in the light. And then it says, walk as children of light. What does it tell you? 
you gradually are staying in the light. But he says you were once darkness, and now you are in the light. So after your conversion, you say, you know the answer. Why are you looking so afraid? Not for her. So that's, there are two truths in that verse. You see the positional truth, and you see what? The experiential truth. The positional truth is you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light. Positional truth. But then it's telling you, walk as children of the light. So if it's telling you to walk as children of the light, it means that you can walk as a child of darkness. Yet that same verse has told you that you are in the light. So you are positioned in the light. By your instant conversion, you are changed from darkness to light. That is not in doubt. Some of us got born again, again and again and again. Because we felt we got born again, then we fornicated. Hey, I'm no longer born again. Or we got born again and we told a lie. You don't need to be getting born again and again and again. If you got born again according to Romans 10, what we just read, that you believe in your heart and confess to your, with your mouth, you were born again. You were moved from darkness to light. Past tense, you are no longer in darkness. Colossians tells us you have been delivered from the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. But now you are in that kingdom. By discipleship, you need to learn how to walk as children of the light and not as a child of darkness. Amen. Romans 13, write this down. 12 to 14, you see there, you should cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So you see, talking to believers, yet he's telling you, cast off the works of so believers can exhibit the works of darkness, but they are in the light. That's why some people find it difficult getting born again. But I know this person. He's born again. But look at the way he's acting. No, he's in the light. But he needs to be discipled to learn how to cast off the works of darkness and put on the right clothes, the armor of light. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. And he himself gave some to be apostles. Somebody say apostles. Some prophets. Say it, prophets. Some evangelists. And some pastors. And teachers. For, look at verse 12. For the equipping of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the equipping of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Church, God is so interested in our welfare. God is so interested in our becoming disciples. God is so interested in our becoming who he's called us to be. God is so interested in positioning us for the manifested word by having our mind, our will, and emotions line up with him that God gave gifts to the body of Christ to help us in the process of discipleship. He says he gave apostles. Haven't we just enjoyed the ministry of an apostle? He gave us apostles. He gave us prophets. He gave us pastors, teachers, evangelists. And then he tells us why. For, for the equipping of the saints. That expression, you know, I explained this in the first service and I want to explain it very well in the second as well. How many of us here have ever had a dislocated bone in our body? I, kept, I don't know, so many people, what have you done? Why did you dislocate your bone? So many people raise their hands. You've, you've had a dislocated bone. Good. Before you got born again, you were a dislocated bone. Amen. Now, when you got born again, and you submit yourself to these gifts we are talking about, which God has given us for the purpose of building us and discipling us. It says for the equipping of the saints, that expression is actually a medical expression that means setting a bone in its right place. Taking a bone and setting it in its right place. So if your hip bone has been dislocated, if it's going to be set in its right place, is it going to be set in the shoulder socket? Huh? Is it going to be set in the elbow socket? Where is it going to be set? In the hip socket. So when you are discipled, you find your place. 
Not only do you find your place, you are set in your place. And it goes on to say, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So in your place, you do the work of the ministry. And for the building or the edifying or the development of the body of Christ. When every bone is set in its right place, the body functions optimally. If you dislocated your bone at any time and a doctor had to set your bone, before that bone was set and before it healed, could your body function perfectly? If it was your hip bone, were you not walking like this? If it was your shoulder bone, if it was your left shoulder, you couldn't lift things. If it was your right shoulder, you couldn't write and sign things if you're right-handed or if you're left-handed, whichever way. Point is, your body was not operating in its fullness because a bone was dislocated. But when a bone is set in its rightful place, the body functions optimally. It says he gave us these gifts for the setting in place of members of the body of Christ. So that while those members are set in place, they can do the work of the ministry. And while the work of the ministry is being done, the body will be built up, developed, and edified. Glory be to God. Many times you find out that those who complain about the body of Christ both globally and locally, not being developed the way they want it to be, are those who are not set in place. If you set yourself in place, or if you allow yourself to be discipled and you discover your place, the body will be built up. Amen. If everybody sitting here has found and discovered their purpose in life, and everybody sitting here has found their place to serve in this local church, do you think we will function better as a local church? Certainly. Write this down. The process of discipleship is seen in learning the word under these ministry gifts, finding your place, serving in it, And building up the body of Christ as we strive towards one target. The process of discipleship is seen in learning the word under these ministry gifts. Finding your place. Serving in it. And building up the body of Christ as we strive towards one target. Now, the next statement I want you to write down, I want you to put stars, exclamation mark, and if you're the kind of person that highlights, highlight it, color it, underline it, so so you see it, either in your notebook or in your iPad or your phone or whatever you're writing with. Are you ready? You stunt your growth. You know what it means to have stunted growth? When you don't grow normally? You stunt your growth. And delay your journey of discipleship. When you don't find your place and do the work of the ministry. You stunt your growth. And delay your journey of discipleship. When you don't find your place and do the work of the ministry. I've just told you that if a hip bone is dislocated, it fits into the hip socket. If a shoulder bone is dislocated, it fits into the shoulder socket. If an elbow is dislocated, I think nose can dislocate too. Dr. Zubi, nose is like for a boxer, is dislocated, it needs to be set back in place, right? You can't take a nose and set it in the hip. No. So every bone has a place that it's supposed to fit into true. And I told you that before you got born again, you were a dislocated bone. And salvation brought you back. So where is your place? Choir. Your own doesn't enter. Usher. It does not fit. Children's church. Mban. It doesn't enter. 
Evangelism, it cannot fit. Follow up, the socket is too big. Protocol, the security. Teen church, mm -mm, that's not my style. Cleaning, Mike. Gardening, do I look like a gardener? Tent maintenance, it doesn't enter. If that is your story, having been in church, you can, PA, camera, sound, generator, design team, mm -mm, that socket doesn't fit that bone. There are two things, check your bone, or check if you are truly a disciple. have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new. As you have promised, I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew 
and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts. Please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. You can now watch Fresh Dew with Pastor Nkechi Ene every day on My Faith TV from Monday to Friday by 9.30 p.m. West African time or 10.30 p.m. Central African time from the 1st of July, 2019. Child of God, seek to know the Word of God. Seek to get a revelation for yourself. Find out more on our website, freshdew.tv. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.